Warning, this video contains some actions that may not be safe. Please be cautious and we claim no responsibility for any injuries obtained from following the instructions presented in this video. Hey guys, in this video we are going to show you how to configure your Micro Ski Sky flight controller here in Clean Flight, which is the GUI that you use to configure it. So this is the older version of Micro Ski Sky here, uh, and the newer version looks a little bit different, but the process is exactly the same. And if you haven't already, you'll need to have your firmware flashed in this video, because we're not going to be covering that. That was actually covered in this video. For this, first of all, you might need to install a UART driver. I did on my MacBook Pro, and I had to on a bunch of MacBook Airs at my school. The link to the UART driver you will need to install is in the description below. So, for this, you are going to need a micro USB cable. A micro ski sky flight controller. And some form of computer. So Clean Flight is a Chrome app, which means that it can be downloaded from the Google Web Store here. And if you just search Clean Flight in Safari, this will be the first result that comes up. It'll say download here, but since I already have it downloaded, it just says launch. So you're gonna want to download it and then open it up. Okay, so now that you have Clean Flight installed and ready to go, what you're gonna want to do is take your micro USB cable and simply plug it into the micro USB port on the back of your ski sky. And then this can be plugged into your computer. Okay, really quickly, just if you're wondering what the lights on the micro ski sky mean. So this quickly flashing red light means that it is in bind mode. And if it's flashing slowly, it means it's just searching for the transmitter. Uh, as you'll notice, it'll flash slowly for about 10 seconds, then start flashing fast. This flashing green light means that it's not level. And over here, there's actually another light that is blue, which would turn on if it is armed. And now we can go into CleanFly and start setting this guy up. I am currently covering the most recent update of CleanFly, but as you know, things change, so things might be arranged a little bit differently. I have also created a complete slide deck online that covers the whole CleanFly configuration step-by-step, step, which is also handy, and the link to that is also included in the description below. Okay, so here we are in the CleanFly homepage here. And as you can see, it says, welcome to Clean Flight. And the firmware flash is down here if you haven't already done that. Like I said, check out our other video. It, there's a little trick to it. Since I plugged in my micro ski sky, it says USB to UART here. And as you can see, as I unplug it, it says uh, Bluetooth incoming port. And when I plug it in, back to UART again. So you should press connect and it should connect instantaneously. Okay, so as you can see here, we are in our setup tab here. And there's like a bunch of tabs here. We're only gonna be going all the way down to the modes tab. So to calibrate the accelerometer on a micro ski sky, you're gonna to want to hold your micro ski sky on a level surface and press it down. Even better if you have it installed on a quadcopter because it could be installed a little bit crookedly because of the way you soldered it or something. So the point is you're just gonna to to put your micro ski sky on quadcopter or off quadcopter on a really level surface, press it down, and then click the calibrate accelerometer button. Nothing really else to do on this page, but as you can see, as I rotate the flight controller around here, the little uh, model there rotates around also. Now we can move down to the configuration tab. The ports tab we will not be touching. So right here, we're going to want to double check that quad X is selected unless you're using something else. The micro ski sky only is compatible with quadcopters. Now that we have quad X selected, we're going to want to move over to this ESC motor features. So for this, you want to select a motor stop because otherwise, as soon as you plug in your power, the motors are going to start spinning and it's really bad. Make sure that's checked and then you want to make sure disarm motors regardless of throttle value um, is checked. That pretty much enables arming. If you uncheck this, your quad's always armed. Now it's up to you here, but you can enable um, VBAT, which is a battery voltage monitoring, which will allow you to uh, see the battery voltage when you plug it in. I mean, like, why not? I don't enable current meter because there's not really a purpose because it's a micro quad. So we're not going to worry about any of this stuff here. Uh, as you can see, black box is already checked. There's no point turning it off. doesn't really matter because um, we don't have telemetry anyway, so it's not going to do anything. We're not going to touch anything else here. So I'm just going to press save and reboot here down the corner. Give it a second. And now it says ready up top. I can move down to the fail safe settings. You want to make sure fail safe 2 is enabled. You can check this if you want a kill switch although it's a micro quad so i wouldn't be too worried make sure to check failsafe uh, 2 is enabled though and then you can select land for your failsafe procedure 
And if you change anything here, you can press save and reboot, but it's not really necessary because nothing here needs to be changed for me. I would only suggest enabling the failsafe kill switch if you have like an 8 channel radio and have extra channels to spare. So don't worry about any of this here. You don't have to worry about resetting it or showing all the PIDs or anything. All you need to know here is that under proportional roll pitch and yaw, if you lower these numbers, you'll lower the sensitivity. And the same thing here, if you lower these, it'll also lower the sensitivity. Right now, I'm actually going to lower this to 0 0.1 and 0 0.1 and 0 0.1. And that should just dumb it down just a teeny bit because these are pretty sensitive here. Now we can go over to our receiver settings here. And this is going to be a little bit strange and it's going to vary on which transmitter you are using. So the micro ski sky is usually default using spectrum. To do this, what you're going to do is wait for your board to enter bind mode. By now it most likely is unless you've just recently unplugged and plugged it back in. This little red light on the front of your flight controller here is flashing quickly. Okay guys, so once you get that quickly blinking red light on your micro ski sky, that indicates that it has entered bind mode, you're also going to want to put your transmitter into bind mode. So the steps for putting each transmitter into bind mode varies based on your model, but for the DX5V, I'm just gonna show you how, because the idea and process is usually very similar. So for the first thing, we're gonna wanna make sure all of our sticks are in their lowest or centered position. So you want your throttle to be at the lotus, and then you want your pitch and roll here to be centered, and you want your other mode switches to be all the way forward, and your rate switch to be on low. And then you also want to just power on your transmitter and make sure that everything is centered. So now that we may have all of our sticks centered, we can power off our transmitter. And then if you'll notice on the rear of our transmitter here, there's this momentary switch, and that is called our trainer switch. And for the DX5V, what you're gonna wanna do is hold that trainer switch forward, and then power on your transmitter. And then all the lights at the top here should start flashing. And what you're going to want to do is wait for the light on your micro ski sky, the red light that was flashing quickly, to turn off. And then when you release, it should say your battery level here, and then on your micro ski sky, the light should turn solid, indicating the solid connection. If it doesn't, it's kind of natural for the micro ski sky not to get a solid light right after binding, so you can sometimes just power it off and power it back on and it'll work. But once you got that done, you are bound, and we can continue our receiver configuration in clean flight. And as you can see, as I adjust my throttle here, the throttle goes up, but as you can see, none of my other sticks are actually responding here. The reason why is because I have the wrong thing selected. So for my computer, it usually works when you just select the right one and say Spectrum here, and then you want to go down here and select uh, Spectrum 1024 and make sure it's RX Serial and then you can press save. And then this should work where the throttle goes up and then everything else should be working. If this doesn't work for you, like it's not working for me, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to set it for the default and then you're going to want to actually select RX PPM. Just say save for a second it's gonna take you to the configuration page, yet still say you're in receiver. You're gonna go back to your receiver page, then you're gonna wanna select Spectrum again, and then you're gonna wanna say RX Serial, and then say Save, and then go back to your receiver page, and this time it should work. So as you can see, throttle goes up, and then both my pitch, roll, and yaw are all moving properly. I don't know why it does this. I really have no idea. It just does. That's just how to fix it. It's a really strange, weird error, but there you go. So now that we have our receiver connected properly, we can go over here. So basically what this is, is this is your throttle and you can change the expo in your throttle. So what that means is right now, as you increase your throttle, it's a linear increase. So as you increase it, it'll just evenly go upwards until you get your max throttle. But, for example, if you increase the throttle expo to 0.6, for example, it gets warped like this. So, as you increase your throttle value, the thrust goes up, and then it goes down a little bit when you put your throttle at its middle point, and then it goes up again. So, what this allows you to do is it can help you hover and stuff, but I just like to leave it at zero. And it's the same thing for the RC rate, except this affects your sensitivity. So, when your stick's at zero, it's at zero, and then as you bring it up, it slowly becomes 
more and more sensitive as you jam the stick further and further forward, then all of a sudden when you reach about this point, it goes up even more. If you set it right, you can make it so you can do um, tricks and stuff. I just like to leave it at what it is right here, but as you can see, if I adjust my expo to like 8, 5, or maybe even 1, there's a big curve. And what this will allow you to do is have fine control for FPV and then jam it all the way one way and possibly do like a flip. If you adjust the RC rate here, this is how you can also uh, change your sensitivity a little bit. And now that you're done with that, make sure to press save and you can go down to your modes section. So for this, we're going to be selecting our modes. So the DX5E has five channels, which means you have your four channels for roll, pitch, yaw, throttle, and all that good stuff. And then you have this one switch here up in the left corner. And it has three positions, off, medium, high. For arming, as you can see, as I move my switch to three positions, it jumps around. So I'm going to have it so when it's off, it's not touching the green bar. So when it's in the green bar, that means it's going to apply this function. So as you can see, the little green marker is outside the bar, so it's not going to be armed when it's at zero. But when it's at one, it's going to be armed. And when it's at two, it's still going to be armed because it is within this green bar. So if I press save, you can see the little light here that says motor arming comes on and this arm gets highlighted in green. And when I turn it off, it becomes disarmed. Armed, disarmed, armed, disarmed. So this is nice um, so you don't grind up your fingers on accident. And if you are having trouble where the green notch is within the green bar and it still says it isn't armed, you're most likely using a new transmitter and the throttle is trimmed a little bit high. So I reduce the trim on your transmitter because it won't allow you to arm your micro ski sky if it's at a severe angle or if your throttle value is too high so you don't accidentally grind yourself up when you arm it. Okay, so now that we have our arming function set up, we're going to want to add our angle function. So for this, I'm going to leave the slider where it is so when my switch is in its mid position, it activates angle mode. So pretty much what angle is, is it's a angle limiter on your quad. So it doesn't allow your quadcopter to tilt past a certain angle, which prevents flips. Okay, so now that we have angle added, we can add horizon. So horizon mode is like angle mode, except there is no angle limiter. So you can jam your stick forward, and after a while, your quad's angle will just slowly increase until it flips or crash because you can no longer keep your altitude. For this, I'm going to drag the bar so it aligns with the end bar of angle mode. So when I put my switch in the furthest position, it activates horizon mode. As you can see, when my switch is in its middle position, it is armed and in angle mode, and when it's in its furthest position, it is armed and in horizon mode. And when it is armed, your micro ski sky should light up a nice blue light in the corner near your micro USB port, and that is your arming indicator. Okay, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to give us a like, subscribe, and if you have any other video ideas, make sure to leave them in the comments below, and see you next time.